everybody, this is Dana from Massland Investing. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, what I want to talk about today is uh, how to create a solid business strategy. I refer to it as similar as uh, taking a trip with your family across the country or even with yourself. Um, you need a road map. Without a road map, you're typically lost. I I've done it, thought I knew everything, load the car, get the family all ready to go, gonna head, to head west start out, took a look at the map, had a great idea, had my plan in my head. Somewhere along the line, I take a wrong turn. Uh, you've probably been there, you pot and say, listen, why don't you check the map? No, no, I got this, I got this. Uh, happened to me one time, it took me about a full day to catch up to where I should have been. So, I'm sure you guys can relate. Uh, it's the same thing as having a business strategy. You need to have a map, you need to have a direction, you have to have a plan, what your business model is, try to stick to it. It can always change as the economy changes. Things change, but typically try to have a plan A, B, C, D. This is what I'm going to do. This is how I'm going to invest in this business. Uh, the clearer the strategy, the much easier it is going forward. And you know how I am. I've been preaching it. Keep this whole thing simple. It's not rocket science. So once again, this lesson is about keeping your business investing strategy simple have a good business plan. So let me go over some of the key factors that I determined in the business over the years. Uh, the first thing I determine is what type of land investing you're going to do. Uh, there's a couple of types of investing. There's long term and short term. I've gone, gone over with a couple of the other lessons, but basically long term would be speculative investing, short term would be buying and selling, flipping, trying to keep your money going, buying at wholesale, turn around and selling it retail just under retail so you keep your money moving that's the two types short and long-term investing uh, the next thing would be how you're going to find motivated sellers uh, typically there's a bunch of ways to do it some guys are, uh, talk about uh, driving for dollars you drive around your farm area you're looking for high grass looking for sale by owners uh, another way would be going on Zillow I've done it in the past uh, you look at what's on the, on the market and the type of property you want to buy and then you just go ahead and lowball offers to whoever's selling the property. Uh, once in a while you can get some good pickings that way. I've done quite a few like that. So that's another way. Uh, you can advertise online. Facebook's got a great platform now to find motivated sellers. Uh, there's an array. Another way to do it is a lot of guys uh, talk about uh, going to the county and getting a, uh, a list of delinquent tax properties. You can do it that way. So there's an array of ways to do it. And that, that's just finding motivated sellers. Uh, the next thing on the list is conventional or creative. Uh, conventional investing would be more so uh, you're just doing it to find property, so you're going to go ahead and uh, look on the MLS, multiple listings, talk to a realtor to find out what's available. Uh, typically you're going to put in a little lower ball offer, try to get the property, then turn around and try to sell it at retail or just over retail. That would be conventional investing. Uh, what I refer to as creative investing is more so what you see guys doing, trying to buy at a wholesale price, uh, turn around and sell it, discount or retail, either sell a discount to a buyer's list or a builder's list, or sell just below retail through a realtor, or place the ad yourself on Craigslist, uh, Zillow, there's a multitude of platforms to use. So that would be a difference between creative and conventional buying. So, uh, next one, where, where is your farm area going to be? Now, I've mentioned in the past, I've at one time had 10, 12 particular farm areas in one state. Uh, I recommend starting out, you pick one good farm area, determine where you're going to farm that area. And farm area obviously means the area that you're going to work. You're going to find motivated sellers, and then you're going to find buyers, put, put them back on the market, the properties, and sell to uh, sellers. So that's typically you're determining your farm area. You need to do that because you can't be all over the board. Uh, the next one will be what type of land are you targeting? When I say land, that's properties you're going to be buying for motivated sellers. Uh, some guys target acreage, uh, anywhere from 1 to 50 acres, maybe even bigger, 100 acre properties, and that's their specialty. Uh, some guys and girls, they target just farm properties. There's a great market. It's, it's probably the largest industry in the world farming right now. It's going to grow every day, so that's another great market. Target farm areas. You can turn around, buy farmland, lease it back to farmers, hold the property, let the equity grow over time as the demand gets higher. That's another great option. Uh, another option is buying smaller properties, finding properties in gated communities or platted lots. The builders have platted out years ago, and, you, and you're just buying smaller building lots 
and, and selling that way. So that's the difference between that. Okay. Next will be what price point you're willing to pay. And when I say price point, that's another thing you got to determine with your business model because you, obviously you need a budget. You got to put some money aside when you do this part time to start out. So you got to have an idea what you want to spend on these properties. I typically recommend that when you sell them. If you're going ahead, going ahead, and you're trying to flip property, move them rapidly. That you, you buy properties anywhere from 25 to 35 percent of the market value. So, for instance, if you if you're going to try to sell properties that are retail about 20, then your budget would be about five thousand dollars a property you're willing to put out. Okay, so you kind of want to determine up front so you know what you need to start out with. You can start out with buying, trying to buy properties at 500 dollars. I mean, I hear guys online that talk about buying properties at 100 dollars, 200 dollars. I think that they're not adding the fact that they probably had to pay some back taxes, so that's all going to be determined also. So I'm not going to tell you guys you can buy properties at a tax deed sale for 100 or you can buy farmland for 100 an acre because I think there's something missing. You've got to pay taxes. Uh, a lot of times you get it that cheap because it's back taxes owed. So I'm as straight as a day as long. I don't want to mislead you guys. Whatever I tell you, I, I want to make sure you guys understand and the numbers of what they are. So. Determine a budget, whether it's 500, 1,000, 2,000, 10,000 property that you want to tie up just in case you can't move it uh, rapidly, so at least you know what you're getting to before you get started. Uh, the next thing would be what price are you going to sell your properties at? And when I say that, a lot of, a lot of investors, uh, they go in and, and their intention is to flip property, move it rapidly. Uh, they, they determine that they're going to sell just to discount buyers lists. Meaning you're going to buy wholesale, you're going to turn around and use a buyer's list that you've created over time, and you're going to sell the properties to the potential buyers at a discount, which would be, say, for instance, the property retails at 20, you might sell it to them at 14, 13, 14, 15, maybe 16, which is a discount below retail. Or you're using a builder's list. A lot of times builders want property. Depends on the market, how much the demand and the supply is at the time. But a lot of times they'll pay close to retail. Sometimes they want to wiggle the numbers a little bit, get a little bit low, below retail and buy at a discount. So you determine that. Or you might want to buy these properties, turn around, own and finance the property. And what I refer to is just above retail because you, you, you work in terms, terms for the potential buyer. It doesn't have any credit, doesn't have a lot of cash. So some, sometimes you can wiggle just above retail. So you need to determine that also. That's part of determining what the market's going to be, where you're going with it. Uh, the next thing would be how you're going to find buyers. And that's just as important as finding motivated sellers. You've got to determine how you're going to find your buyers. I just referred to it. You're going to find your buyers by creating a list of discount buyers or also creating a list of, of uh, builders that want to buy from you. A lot of guys use a variety of things. A lot of guys will use, and guys and girls will use, some of the, the internet platforms, Zillow, Craigslist, eBay, there's a bunch of them out there, I don't want to name all, there's so many nowadays. Uh, Land and Farm, I think it's referred to as. Uh, you can you can solicit on, on Facebook that you're a, you're a land investor and you have properties for sale all the time. A lot of guys use websites. So you need to determine what you're going to do, how you're going to sell the property. So basically that's what we went over today. And these are just key points. What type of land investing are you going to do? How are you going to find motivated sellers? Are you going to sell conventional or create a, uh, be a conventional or creative investor? Where is your farm area going to be? Now, I'm saying a lot of these things. It can be more than one farm area. Don't get me wrong. You can be flexible on that, but you need to have some type of strategy going in so you're not all over the board. You can become proficient at one particular thing and do it well. Uh, what type of land are you going to target? Like I said, you can go acreage, you can go platted lots, you can go gated communities, you can go farmland. There's a whole bunch of varieties. Some guys just do commercial property, buy the property, subdivide it, and resell the property. Uh, what price point are you going to pay? That's very important. Like I said, you got to determine your budget going in because you may be going borrowing some money once you get your tools in your box to get started from a family member, somebody that wants to lend you some money. I don't recommend it. I typically recommend saving up a little bit, bit of money, baby steps, start out, start out with maybe you're going to spend a thousand per property with closing and everything, so you're buying really cheap properties to start off with, but that's up to you. Make a budget and stick to it at, in, at, at the beginning. Um, and then the last thing, how are you going to find the buyers? That's as important as finding sellers. A lot of guys don't really get into the details of that, but that's as important. So you can create a buyer's list through a website, uh, you can create a builder's list, a lot of times realtors will help you out with it. 
Um, you can use realtors to find your buyers. I always recommend sharing the wealth. Build up a team. Party team is a great realtor in any farm area you have. Let them know what you're doing. Let them know you need to move properties. They'll help you determine a, a retail price. A lot of times, like I referred to earlier, they have pocket listings. They have buyers that are always coming in looking for property. They know, they know a whole assortment of different types of buyers and sellers, so they're always an asset. They're always a big part of your team, so consider that also. Don't try to get rich by yourself. I mean, the more you share, the better relationships you build. And I think at the end of the day, you, you'll like yourself a little better, not trying to be too greedy. So that's my lesson for the day. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, obviously, hit the like button. If you feel like sharing, share it. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe if you think it's interesting content for you. Uh, hit the bell if you want to follow us and keep up to date with any new videos that we're producing. So once again, thank you guys. Uh, go out, be kind, be safe. Until uh, we talk again, thanks again, guys. I'm out.